Hello and welcome everyone to Bridging Voices podcast series hosted by the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung Europe. I am Farva Amir. I'm a research analyst with the Energy, Water and Sustainability Program at the Stimson Center. And today we'll be talking about global response to climate risk mitigation, a spotlight on Pakistan floods. <coughs> and we have with us our esteemed guest, Ambassador Asad Majid Khan, Pakistani ambassador to the EU, Belgium and Luxembourg. And Ambassador, I can say this, that we go way back because prior to our um, assignment here in the, EU, uh, in the EU area, you were the ambassador to the United States, serving in Washington, D.C., and you've also been a director of the South Asian Association of Regional Cooperation, SARC. So you kind of understand regional cooperation and global cooperation, like, up front. So... Um, I mean, I'm going to just deep dive into the conversation that we are going to have today. Uh, Devastating floods, firstly, you know, commiserations and all our thoughts and prayers with the people of Pakistan as they go through some of the most difficult times that they've seen in the past few decades. We have had a good sense of the devastation that has been caused by the flash flooding that's happened in Pakistan, the monsoon rainfalls, unprecedented in so many ways, over 33 million people impacted, one third of the country submerged underwater, and the scale is apparent, and media has done a great job in kind of like bringing the visuals from the field to the international community. But for the benefit of our listeners today, uh, would you just walk us through the episodes that kind of like took place during the monsoon season in Pakistan and the aftermath of the climate disaster? Well, first of all, uh, Farwa, thank you very much. Uh, It's such a pleasure uh, to be sitting uh, here with you uh, in Brussels uh, talking about uh, an issue that uh, I know you are very passionate about and I'd like to also, through you, thank uh, the Conrad Adenauer Stiftung um, and this foundation, I think, has done a lot of uh, good work and I am happy that I can also contribute Uh, by actually uh, sharing uh, something about uh, the flood disaster in Pakistan, which, uh, in the words of uh, the UN Secretary General, happened uh, because of uh, monsoons uh, on steroids. And uh, he visited uh, the places uh, and uh, he... uh, actually very clearly put it uh, as something uh, that he has never seen, a climate carnage of this size and scale uh, he has not seen. And for someone who has served as UN High Commissioner for Refugees for a very long time and as also as Secretary General, I think that's a very, very uh, uh, huge statement to be made. On uh, the size and scale, I mean, just to give you a sense of uh, how bad it is that uh, one third of Pakistan uh, uh, was inundated. This year we had rains uh, which were 8.9 times the 30-year average in the south of Pakistan, particularly in the Sindh province. In Balochistan, it was close to around seven uh, times uh, the usual average rains. Uh, 13,000 kilometers of roads have been devastated. Uh, 439 bridges uh, have been destroyed. And and this is really uh, the disaster. Uh, But the flood disaster uh, has been unfortunately followed by a, a health disaster. Uh, by uh, basically we are also seeing uh, a a livelihood uh, catastrophe also uh, arising on the scene right now Uh, because what has happened is that uh, our infrastructure, uh, our agriculture, uh, our transport uh, has been uh, affected uh, in a very, very serious way. And so we are seeing uh, both uh, the, the livelihood crisis, the health crisis, the food crisis. Uh, because uh, of the water, even under normal circumstances, uh, we will have to face uh, vector-borne diseases like dengue, you know. And with so much water uh, out there, uh, it has actually turned into 
a major uh, catastrophe and uh, a major burden on our health infrastructure. Uh, and the fact that uh, water destroyed a number of uh, hospitals, uh, a number of health facilities, uh, it has actually uh, added uh, additional stress. Similarly, education. Uh, 26,000 schools uh, have uh, been damaged or destroyed. With about 7,000 schools that were actually not directly impacted by the floods being used uh, for sheltering people who didn't have anywhere to go. And those schools are actually being used, which means, and there are still many areas in Pakistan where uh, water has not been drained, which means that these schools will continue to be used uh, for sheltering people, which would mean that uh, the kids are not going to be able to go to schools. So they will miss at least half a year of their education. Similarly, crops, because the areas that have been hit by the floods, you know, are areas where we produce uh, a lot of our rice, where we produce uh, a lot of our cotton, uh, where we are actually also, uh, you know, uh, basically dependent on those intermediate crops. Uh, and with the food inflation going around uh, all, all over the world, you know, it, it, it really poses an additional challenge for a population which was under a lot of stress because of increased food prices. So we are actually anticipating uh, a lot more, uh, I would say, uh, stress uh, on common people. And, and, and in this process, as you know well, uh, that uh, you know, it is the vulnerable population. And I think uh, what is really worse is that uh, all of this is happening uh, on account of climate change and uh, something where Pakistan uh, actually has uh, contributed the least. Mm -hmm. and, and that makes uh, this whole disaster and its acceptance and acceptability by common people on the street as more and more difficult.